verse 18, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Let me say to Brother Esau and Sister Allen, thank you so much. Amen. Yes, uh, thank you, Brother Esau, for leading service. And I have found out that I don't mind leading service, but I already have what I have to preach. And if somebody can lead service, sometimes it just really helps me out. And uh, you did a great job, Brother Esau. Yes, great man. job. Amen. Sister Allen, great job on the music. I'm thankful for the people that fills in and helps. Yes, Amen. Amen. And uh, Sister Kite and my wife are away. And they're at vacation Bible school with Sister Gerald. Amen. Down there at Brother Gerald's church. And so we're going to pray for safe travels. Me and Brother Kite has been bashing the last couple days, but we're going to make it. I've lost a little weight. Have you? Uh, ready for our wives to get back so we'll have something to eat. Amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6. And let me say this. I'm so thankful that God has touched Sister Marina. Yes. We need to continue to pray for Sister Davis. Brother Davis, is she getting better? Okay, we need to pray for Sister Davis. In fact, let's lift our hands right now and pray for Sister Davis. God, I'm asking you to touch her right now, God. This rash, whatever this sickness is on her body. God, as the testimonies went forth the miraculous healings, God, miraculously touch her right there wherever she is, God, in her house. Amen. And confirm it by your word, God, and you'll get all the glory. We thank you for doing it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And God touched Sister Harpin this past week. She was sick. Thankful for that. And Sister Deacons went in the hospital and had surgery. Sister Dinkins is a tough lady. Y'all know that, right? She had surgery two days ago. And she's in church right now. Amen. And she had kidney stones. And they... Would you like to say something? No, I just wanted to... Oh, uh, Monday. Monday, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Three days ago. Amen. That's still awesome, though. But Sunday night, she was up here cleaning the church. That night, she goes into the ER and has... Emergency surgery for her kidney stone. I'm glad God brought her through that. And she's back in the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Matthew 16, 18. Jesus is talking to Peter. said, And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want to talk to you about steadfast, unmovable, and established. Right. Steadfast, unmovable, and established. God, I thank you for your word. It's already anointed because it's your word. But I pray that you would anoint our ears and our hearts, God, that we may receive this word that's going to go forth, God. I thank you for giving me, God, the grace to be able to deliver this. In your precious name. And the church said, in Jesus' name, you can be seated. Thank you for standing. Some of these things just come to me as I'm up here. But let's also remember that. Um, we have the door hangers in the back. It's on the uh, shelf to the left that you can hang. You can find some houses and hang them on the door and invite people to church. And so um, you're more than welcome. I, I wouldn't do it probably tomorrow because I may show up to the Jesus Church Sunday. We're not going to be here. But we welcome you to grab a couple of door hangers. And if you want to put that on some doors and invite some people to church, we're just going to pray that God does something in their life. Amen. Steadfast, unmovable, and established. The psalmist said in verse in chapter 18, verse 2, it said, The Lord is my rock. Yes. Jesus said, I built my church on the rock. Come on. And the gates of hell is not going to prevail. The psalmist says in chapter 18, verse 2, the Lord is my rock. So Jesus Christ is the rock, the foundation in which the church is built upon. And my fortress. My deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Look how many benefits you get with God. He's your rock. He's your fortress, which is your stronghold. He's your deliverer. He's your God. He's your strength. Anybody need strength tonight? Jesus Christ is your strength. In whom I will trust. What do I trust in? What do I turn to? Let me tell you somebody who's never going to break your trust. Jesus Christ will never break your trust. My buckler. He's going to be a shield unto you. He's going to shield you from things that have an intention of hurting or harming you. The horn of my salvation and my high tower. The church is built on the rock. And the rock is Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful that I know who my foundation is. 
Yes. We are the church. Everybody say I. I. I'm the church. Paul said, members in particular, that you are the body of Christ, and God has set them in the church. And so we understand the church goes past a wall or an organization or a group. It's actually the people of God. And when you are born again of spirit, God fills you with the Holy Ghost and you're baptized in Jesus' name, you are birthed into the church. And I'm thankful that with that promise, God says, hell is not ever going to prevail against you. Right. Notice the word prevail. Because Jesus said, my church is built on the rock. That's why no matter what comes, you got to stay in the church. Jesus said, my father has given you into my hand and nothing will be able to take you out. Nothing meaning situation and circumstance. But you can take your own self out of God's hand. Can I tell you the safest place is in the church? Can I tell you the best place is in the church? Can I tell you the happiest place is in the church? Can I tell you the most peaceful, stable, whatever word you want to put it, is in the church? The church is what God purchased with His blood. You are worth enough, God. He bought you. And He bought you when you were broken. You were enough for Him broken because He said, you know what? I'm going to take them home and I'm going to fix them up real nice. Hallelujah. But He said, the gates of hell will not prevail. It did not say hell would not fight. Because many of you know that hell is going to fight you. But there's a big difference between fighting and prevailing. Prevail means to be victorious. So what are you saying, Jesus? I'm saying if you get in the church, there's going to be things fight you. But if you stay in the church, those things will not be victorious in your life. They will not claim victory or dominion. Jesus said he will fight, but you, hell is going to fight, but you are going to win. No matter the situation or the circumstance. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let's look right quick. I'm talking about steadfast, unmovable, and established. First word I want to focus on is steadfast. And we find that when Naomi is leaving, uh, and she has Ruth and her daughter-in-law with her. We all know the story of Ruth, how the daughter-in-law went back. And she told Ruth, go back. And Ruth said, no, I'm not going back. And Naomi said, no, go back. The Bible says that. When Naomi saw that Ruth was steadfastly minded, that word steadfast, to go with her, she left speaking because she knew she had a made-up mind. Amen. If you are going to overcome, you must make up your mind. I don't care what happens, I'm staying in the church. In fact, some say it like this. A made-up mind, half the battle is won. So if you'll make up your mind, you've already got half the battle. One, God will handle the other half, and you'll be victorious. Can I tell you that you can still mess up and have a made-up mind? You can still make a mistake and have a made-up mind. That's why the Bible says, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Why did he tell the enemy not to rejoice? He was letting the enemy know, don't you claim victory over me. Because my difference in getting knocked down, but the enemy don't claim victory, don't establish territory, because though I fall down, I'm getting back up again. You may knock me down on Monday, but come Tuesday, I'm going to get back up again, and I'm going to make up my mind, regardless of my mistakes or failures, today I'm going to try again, and I'm going to do what I know to do is wrong. Because the enemy rejoices, why? When he claims victory. Somebody tell your enemy, it's too early to rejoice. I'm not out yet. Amen. I'm thankful tonight that God has given us a clear mind. A sound mind. Is your mind made up tonight? Or are you? Or do you have the church on the negotiating table? If you do, put it off. It's non-negotiable. I said it's non-negotiable. I'm going to come to church regardless of how I feel. I'm going to come to church regardless of what is happening. Sorry, I'll sit down. Amen. I can't get too carried away. I don't care what happens. The enemy can be 
like Ruth. Can I tell somebody? Could the enemy kind of keep talking to you because you may not have a made up mind? And, and I'm not I'm not casting or anything. I'm just saying like sometimes when you are convinced, you talk to the people, it's like you're trying to tell them but they're convinced. It's like, there ain't no use talking. That's what I want the enemy to catch on with me. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no use to keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we got to leave him alone. He, he's not going to give in. I don't care. But when Ruth, when Naomi saw that she had a steadfast mind and her mind was made up, amen. Steadfast means resolutely or dutifully Firm and unwavering, sure-footed. We did a trail ride several years ago, uh, back when I was probably in my teenage years, 13, 14, 15. We would go with my family, my mom's side of the family, to uh, New Mexico. We would have a trail ride, and we would ride horses and mules in the mountains. And uh, we would get way up there. I'm talking like way up the mountain, and the trail is like this big, and it's just straight drop-off on either side. And a thing about a mule, and you get a mule when you mix a horse and a donkey. And a mule is stubborn. But let me tell you something about a mule. A mule is sure-footed. And so I've been on horses way, way up in the mountains. And we're up there. And that horse hit a rock and stumbled and catch itself. And you're like, oh, Jesus. God forgive me for everything I've ever done. I cross every T I thought ever I. Y'all, I'm sorry. You know, whatever you can do. But I'm telling you, when you get up there, you get in them high places where, the, where it's very narrow. That mule, you want a mule because they are sure-footed. Amen. Can I tell you that God will take you into some high places? But if you will make up your mind, I'm sure-footed. I'm not going to stumble. I'm not going to turn back. I want my mind made up, and I'm telling you, God will take you as high as you want to go. All right. Hallelujah. As high as you want to go. If you will just make up in your mind, I'm going to do it. James 1 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you don't have a made-up mind, you introduce unstableness into your life. When you don't have a made-up mind, you are inviting instability into your spiritual walk with God. And let me tell you something. I've had my spiritual walk unstable, and it's no fun. Because when these things enter our lives, that pushes us out of our lane. Because what happens is God establishes us, and it's like a lane out here. When these things push us out, they claim dominance in our life. We don't have a lane. And so we're half in this lane, half in that lane, and it doesn't fit, and it, became, it becomes very frustrating. Now, how do you fix instability? How do you fix instability? If I have unstable, if I have a spiritual life that is unstable, how do I fix it? James 4 and 8 tells us, draw nigh to God. How do I draw nigh to God? Prayer, His Word, fasting, whatever it may be. God, I need to get close to you. Draw nigh to God. If, if there are areas in your spiritual walk with God that you feel like you're fighting instability, make up in your mind, God, I want to draw closer to you. Maybe it means praying every morning. Maybe it means praying every morning and every night. Something that you can feel like you can draw close to God with. And the Bible says if you will make that effort, God will in turn draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. Repent. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. So, draw nigh to God, repentance, and pure, purity. Reading the Word of God, getting the pure thoughts, thinking on those things that be pure. That's how we fix instabil instability in our lives. Amen. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38 is when the, the, pit, the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And in verse 42, this is the key of how they made it. Bible says, Acts 2, verse 42... And they continued, everybody say continued. Continued. Steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. These are the foundational things that can keep you in the church. You have to continue. Yes. And Amen. you can't always rely on emotions because your emotions will deceive you. But you just got to make up in your mind, regardless of how I feel or what's coming against me, I'm going to continue steadfastly 
And I'm going to keep doing what I know to do. The people that don't make it are the ones that have problems continuing. Because the enemy will let you come, but he won't let you stay. That's the difference. But if you can ever claim dominion and territory where the enemy has always tried to make you unstable in, God will take you to a new level and that will no longer be a battle and you will continue to move up and up and up. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, this is Paul speaking, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be unwavering, be unmovable, because God cannot use us if we are not sure-footed. If you want to be used of God, you've got to be steadfast and you've got to be unmovable. I didn't say perfect because there's going to be times that you make mistakes and you fall. But if you get back to where you know God wants you to be, I'm telling you, God will forgive you and God will build upon that mistake and you will learn from that mistake and you will be better the next time it comes around. Amen. Yes, amen. Psalm 16 verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. This speaks of the decision of David to put God first in his life. There's God, family, and church. Nobody takes the place of God. He said, I will have no other gods before me. If there is instability introduced into my life, it's a sign that God is not number one in my life. Amen. David said... He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. There was a standing and security in David's life that would not have otherwise existed. Amen. God will cause those things that try to move you and try to make you unstable. God will cause those things to cease in your life. I'm telling you. That's why we have to be very careful. With the spirit of unfaithfulness. Because unfaithfulness is always looking to replicate itself. We have to be careful with the spirit of backsliding. Backsliding is a spirit. And it is habit forming. The spirit of backsliding will only let you live for God when God is doing the miracle. Come on. But it will not let you live for God when there's dry seasons. And what happens is the spirit of backsliding, when it takes root in our life, it causes our, our spiritual life to be unstable, unsettled. And the enemy can come in and move us everywhere we want. And in fact, you find that Israel had to be healed of their backslidings. Backsliding is an infirmity. It is a spiritual cancer that God can heal. But you know how? You overcome it. When you want to quit, you just keep going. And what happens is you build up endurance and you build up stamina. And then the next time you want to quit, you're like, it, it becomes easier. It's like praying. It's like what Brother Gable testified about. Yes. Coming to church, praying, reading your Bible. The less you do it, the less you want to do it. The more you pray, the more you read your Bible, the more you come to church, the more you do it, the more you want to do it. Amen. And so situations in our life when the enemy tries to make us be unfaithful or put temptations in our life, what is he trying to do? He's trying to introduce instability. He's trying to introduce a cycle. And what happens with the cycle is we see this with abuse cases. There is a cycle where there's an abuser, and then there's the honeymoon, and then there's an empty cycle, and then there's abuse. And we and it's a constant cycle. And they want to change. They don't want to do what they, they're doing, but they're stuck in a cycle. Yes, that's true. Amen. Right. And if we're not careful, the enemy will try to introduce cycles of unfaithfulness in our life. And if you look up and find yourself stuck, it's like, why do I keep making the same mistake? Why? You have an issue 
But let me tell you something good tonight. God can fix the issue. Yes, can I tell you the only reason why I'm here is because God fixed my issue? The only reason why you're here is because God fixed the issue. And a lot of these things God will do for you. If you make up in your mind, I'm going to stay in the church, I'm going to keep coming, and I, I, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm just going to keep doing what I know is right, and eventually God is going to build me out of this. Can I tell you, eventually He will? Yes. Yes. Amen. So if you are in one of those cycles here tonight, don't be discouraged, Amen. be excited, because you're the one, you're the next one that's going to get the miracle. Yes. Yes. That's good. First Thessalonians 3, verse 3 says... That no man should be moved by these afflictions. Fill in the blank. What is it in your spiritual walk that moves you? That displaces you? That no man be moved by afflictions. You can put circumstances, problems, situations. In other words... These things that come into your life that they don't affect your spiritual walk for yourselves. Know that we are appointed. God has appointed you. God has called you. Colossians 1 says, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled. Look at that. Verse 23. If you continue in the faith grounded, settled. These are all good words. You can build a, fa you can build a family off of this. Grounded, settled. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Whereof I, Paul, am made minister, continue grounded, settled, not moved. That's what I want to be. That's not what I always am, but that's what I want to be. That's what I want to strive for. Proverbs 12, 3 says, A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be Moved. When sin comes in, what is it? In, what is its intent? To make unstable. It introduces instability. Amen. First, Second Peter one verse twelve. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them. That's why we repeat ourselves sometimes. That's why it's good to remind yourself of the foundational things. That God has introduced into your life. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Brother Reagan, I already know everything that you're saying, right? But we need to be more established because there's storms coming, yes, yes. there's temptations coming. And I need to be always put in remembrance, regardless if I know them or not. There was this man one time that was. At my Christian school. And uh, whenever my parents put me in a Christian school. When I was in the 8th grade. But at chapel. He, he was the janitor. He was a really nice guy. At chapel he always left the service. And I said. You know he was a really nice guy. He could hypnotize people. Which is actually really crazy. He could. He would go like. Nah, 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 and you just like freeze. I, he did it to me one time. I'm serious. <laughs> but I asked him one time. I said why do you always leave chapel? Why aren't you always in church? I'm like, I ain't even in church, but I've been there. Well, they great I wasn't in church then. Don't recommend that. But he says, I already know everything they're going to preach. <laughs> can I tell you it's a living word? Right. Every message, God can give you a different nugget. Yeah. And it's application. I can walk down the aisle at Lowe's and look at all the beautiful paint, but it don't make a hill of beans difference until I buy it and paint it on my house. Yeah. And if we're not careful, we're like, oh, yeah, that's good, that's good. But when's the last time you applied it even though you know it? And I pray, God, help me because I want to be established. Like Bishop Kite is established. Like other elders that we look up to. I want to be established in the truth. The word established means having been in existence for a long time. I want to last a long time in the church. I don't want to be that guy that says, well, yeah, he preached for a few years and, and God gave him a great church and then he backslid. No, I want to be like, hey, I lasted for 50 years. I lasted until I took my last breath. Yes, yes. 
I want to be a pillar in the church. The only way that happens is you've got to make up in your mind. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to be unmovable. And I'm going to be established in the church. Amen. Yeah, good, First Peter 5 verse 10 says, But the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthen, and settle you. Brother Rankin, why am I having to go through this? This is tough. This is suffering. Why? Okay, let me tell you. First off, let me encourage you. It's only going to last for a little while. Right? Amen. After you have suffered for a while. I'm so thankful that I didn't say after you have suffered forever. <laughs> Thank you, God, for the encouragement. Joy does come in the morning. Yes, amen. Sister uh, Molly, you said it's pretty dark right now, but guess what? The sun comes eventually. Yes, amen, amen. Brother Rankin, I don't feel nothing. Keep praying. Eventually, you're going to feel the presence of God. Brother Rankin, it ain't happening. Keep praising. Eventually, your breakthrough service is coming. This is why the enemy fights you so hard. Because he cannot defeat you unless he can displace you. He doesn't need you to be perfect. He needs you to be like, all right, you can have, I give up my territory. Because the enemy is after territory. And when you surrender, what happens is, is you give him the place that you used to occupy. Come on. But I've already made up in my mind. Come on. I'm not giving up my seat. Come on. That's my seat right there. If I give it up, it's because God told me to give it up. It ain't going to be because of an attack of the enemy. And that's the difference. Some of us need to make up in our mind. My pew. I'll move over for a visitor, but I ain't moving over for the devil. Because I'm going to tell, tell you, he's at your territory. And if he can displace you, he can defeat you. But even though he's fighting, if you grab onto your seat and you say, I don't care what's happening. I ain't moving out of my chair. I'm going to be here every time the doors are open. And I'm going to claim my spot. This is my spot. Devil, this is my spot. This does not, hey, wait a second. This does not mean I'm perfect. This does not mean that I've got it figured out. But this does mean every time I come to this spot that I still have dominion over it and I'm not giving up my place to the devil. The enemy cannot defeat you unless he can displace you. Most of the people that are struggling, the major battle is in their mind. And they will tell you this. The major battle is in the mind. Can I tell you that God can heal minds? Yes, 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 I said the Holy Ghost can touch mentals. Can touch people with mental abilities or shut the mind. I'm telling you, after I came here, I was fighting for my life. I told my wife, I said, I'm fighting for my life I, I, every day. I, the enemy's like, you're going to die. I, I got a disease on you. They, no, you're going to do this, and I'm going to kill your kids, and all this other stuff. And I'm just like fighting for my life. But can I tell you, God was at my right hand fighting with me the whole entire time. You know what the attack of the enemy was to do? He was trying to make me quit. He was trying to make me say, don't you go to Victoria? Don't you go play in that territory? That made it 
is not because they're perfect. It's because that they had a made up mind and they refused to give up their place and they allowed the suffering to perfect them, to establish them, to strengthen them and to settle them. Proverbs 10, 25 says, as the whirlwind passes. Amen. Let's be loved by the will of God. I love Brother Davis. Proverbs 12, 10. As the whirlwind passeth. Look at that word, passeth. Which means it's going to eventually go away. See, that's why I don't like the devil. Because the Lord, he lies to me. Yeah. Anybody here like being lied to? Yeah. You know what the devil says? It's always going to be like this. Yeah. This is what you say, lie. Uh, lie. Yes, yes. That's right. Can I tell you, it is not always going to be like this. Because after, as the world right now, your whirlwind is passing. As the world we have passed so is the wicked no more. But the righteous, that you and I, is an everlasting foundation. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is my foundation. He's always, Brother Lopez, he's always going to be here. Amen. He's if you mess up, come to the church and repent. If you mess up again, come back and repent. If you mess up again, come back and repent. God has given you every tool to be successful in the church. And he's given you a foundation that nothing can move you if you make up in your mind. I'm not leaving. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, that's right. Everlasting foundation. That is something. Everlasting means it's going to last past your issue. Come on. It's going to last past your dry season. It's going to last past what you are going through. 2 Timothy 2 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal. What do you do? Amen. It's 836. I'm almost done. You're good. You're good. What do you do when you can goods? Ain't got any canning people in here that's got food put away in case the government takes over? My mom does. I'm going to. If they take over, I'm going to woke. I'll preach to y'all on FaceTime. Because she's got canned goods, right? She's had it put away for years. You know what's keeping it preserved? That seal. This is the seal of the foundation of God. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And I tell you something today with encouragement. The reason why your mistake and your failure did not move you out of the church is because God has made you unmovable. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because God has established you. Yes. There's no way. After God called me to the ministry, after I prayed back through the age of 20, I made mistakes in the next two years that would otherwise make me backslide. But you know what? The night that God filled me again and did the miracle in my life, He established me. The enemy come and tried to rip me up, but too bad God planted me so deep that nothing could rip me up and that's why I'm still here. God said, I'm going to seal you, and that seal is going to preserve you until the day of redemption. I'm telling some of you here tonight, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that the reason why you have made it this far is because God has made you unmovable, and the situation ain't going to change nothing for you. 20 years from now, you're still going to be in the church. 50 years from now, you're still going to be in the church, and you're going to die and go to heaven. Brother Rankin, my mom and my dad didn't make it. I don't care. It's going to be different for you. Ah, God have mercy. Well, you don't know what I've been fighting. Yeah, but I know that you've been sealed. And you are going to be preserved. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, amen. I was I'm done. I was thinking about that today. It was not my effort that got me here. Even though I had to give effort. But I'm telling you, it was just because God says, 
I'm going to give you a mind that you can make up. And I'm going to make you steadfast. I'm going to make you immovable. And I'm going to establish you. That's the, old, the only reason that I'm here. Is because God made it to where the devil couldn't uproot me. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's so good. He did it. Yes. When I didn't have the answers, Sister Marina, he had it. Yes. Yes. When I just left sin, God says, I know you, I know. But one day you're going to pass through a church. And one day you're going to beat the odds. And I'm going to make you to where nothing that comes in your life can move you out of this spot. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Praise God. Oh, yeah. The enemy made me fall. But here's the difference. Oh, yeah. He couldn't claim victory. Yes. Yes, and that's why I'm here. Because my general is more powerful than him. That's it. Because Jesus Christ said, I'm going to establish him, preserve him, make him steadfast, and make him unmovable. And if we ever get to the place, hear me, if we ever get to the place that we feel like we have earned ourselves a spot in his kingdom, we are deceived. Because everything that God has done for us, He's done for us. That's why I'm here. And I come to give Him thankfulness. And I come to tell the enemy, ain't nothing changed with the seal. It's still sealed tight. There ain't no way it's getting there. There ain't no air getting there. And it's going to be preserved. Let's say it all over the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Brother Reagan, I failed. I messed up. Yep. Get back up. Because God has made it to where the enemy cannot claim victory over you. Thank you, Jesus. Steadfast, unmovable, and established. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And this is the hardest thing, and this is what we gotta do. What you said was right about. Somebody asked you about what's our stance on homosexuals. We don't have a personal stance. We love everybody. That's right. The Bible stands against it. Yes. Right. And we stand on the Bible. Yes. But here's what we got to do. I don't care if they're in homosexuality. I don't care if they're messing around with their life. We got to love them enough that when they come in here, we got to give them the word of God. Yes, Lord. And says there, a, there is a way out of your situation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And what happens is, when God does the miracle in their life, God will make them steadfast. Because that's what all these things mess up. That's why they can't commit to God like they need to. But it will make them steadfast, unmovable, and established. And that's what I want to see in everybody's life, including mine. Steadfast, unmovable, and established. Because the foundation of God stands sure. And if you're on an unsure foundation, it's a sign that you have left the foundation of God. But if you just take one step, come back on your foundation, God. This is where I'm, I'm going to build my family. This is where I'm going to build my life. And I'm going to ride this thing out. Yes, Lord. I'm going to ride it out. Let's lift our hands right now. Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the people that came, God. I pray that this word minister to the end, God. In the name of Jesus, God, let your word be revealed right now, God. Let it go home with us. Let it establish us. Let it do what it was designed to do. And I give you all the praise and honor for it. The church said in Jesus' name. You're dismissed. Thank you for coming. Amen. Remember to grab a door hanger on the way out. Amen. And let's see. We will see you Sunday at the Hilton at 10 o'clock. I'm excited about it. Church said in Jesus' name. You're dismissing the fear and the love of the Lord. God bless you.